this is like so exciting. The whole, uh, as you're starting a YouTube live, it's like buffering and I'm like, <laughs> it's just a circle, like buffer, buffer, buffer. And here we are. Hey, everybody. I see that we are three people, four people on this live right now. This is so exciting. Please, can you let me know who is here? I see Frida in the comments. Hi, everybody. You say, please let me know who are here with us today. There have been so many times <laughs> throughout this, like last week, where I was like, okay, there, hey, Smina, where I was like, okay, I really want to. Or I didn't really say I want to, but I said like, okay, I really need to prepare for this live. Like there have been so much information. Like I have a whole document <laughs> because there is so much that I truly want to share with all of you because it's just so much in an amazing, good, loving way because we can like when building our businesses and taking back our power, there are so many tips and tricks that I can share with you. And I was like, okay, I'm going to share that and that and that and that and that. Uh, so I have a full document. And then like today and like last week, I was like, okay, I really should schedule a time where I sit down and go through all my notes <laughs> and, um, and really make them structured so that we have a structured live session. But every time I heard my head say that, my soul were like, no, 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 don't bother. You're not going to follow them anyway. So it doesn't matter. You, you don't need them. So there we are. I have a whole like document, but um, we will see if the structure is there. If it is, then we will follow it. And if it's not, then we won't. So, okay, this is what like my microphone cord looks like. Can we hear each other? fantastic amazing i also i did actually a live session this morning which is called um if you don't feel free right now this is why oh hey Rika. hey oh i guess so that you can hear me good fantastic so i did a live stream this morning also here on youtube called the reason why you don't feel free right now and i can highly 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 recommend that you go and watch that one it's about 20 minutes 20 minutes long I can highly recommend that you go and watch it uh, later on after this one so that you get an understanding of what happens when we are feeling completely stuck. We don't feel free because freedom is from the first beginning a feeling. And if we don't feel free, there is a reason for that. And I share that exact reason in that other live that I did earlier today. So I can highly, highly, highly encourage you to go and watch that. So what I had said that we were going to start with was a form of meditation to just ground ourselves. But I'm just so excited. Like, I don't want to do that because last week <laughs> I had the funniest, funniest incident that I never thought that I was going to share. Like, OK, so you know how I told you the day before uh, last week's live that we did and how I said that my beautiful amazing friend Liana and I we did a like session where I connected to to my higher self and to my guides and and all of them and they were giving me amazing information and they said like you need to double down on everything you do like if you have shared parts of your truth before you need to double down on that if you have shared your humanness before you need to double down on that so something hysterically funny happened. I wasn't sure first if it was funny or not. And I was like, can I really share this? But yeah, I feel that this is a safe place. And I feel that if I'm going to share this anywhere, it's here. Are you ready to hear the funny story that happened? Please let me know. And I'm going to show you also a video. So we'll see if you actually are ready to hear the funny story. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Uh, I'm nervous. Okay. Uh, or I am excited. <laughs> and says, yes. Okay. And the reason I will share it is like, this is not just because it is funny. It is a hysterically funny. 
but the reason why I share it is has a reason. Like everything we do needs to be intentional as we are building. Oh, hey, Robin, I didn't know that you were here as well. Everything we do as we're building our brand and our businesses needs to be intentional. So we need to know and understand why we are doing things. And the reason why I'm sharing this story with you is because the guide says that it's so important that people understand that I'm human. Like, (laughs) that I'm not like, we are all the same. Like, this is so important because this is also what people said uh when when i told you i think it was in this live like last week i'm not really sure somewhere on some live i told this or on my regular youtube but uh that there are certain books that we have been researching and people said well this person who wrote the book feels like they are like way above me and they're like this celebrity person and stuff like that and it was it, it was lacking this human connection so the guide said to me, like, as I am like really building and growing my business, and as all of you are really building and growing your businesses, it's so extremely important that we remember all of this is stuff for you. So bring out your pen and paper. If you don't have your pen and paper right now, bring it out. Like, this is good stuff. Everything we do, connect with people, connect with people by showing your humanness showing what you have gone through. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. So the hysterically funny thing is that last week at the end of the live, well, I did feel that I really needed to go to the bathroom, but I was so (laughs) intrigued by like really, really sharing my story with all of you. And I just felt like my soul were like, say this, say this, and this, say this. And in the end of the last live session, I was like, I really need to go and pee. But then I like, I I forgot about it because I was so like, normally I go to the toilet, like, like kind of all the time. It's hysterically funny because I'm always like, where is the toilet? Where is the toilet? I guess it is because I drink a lot of water and so on. But anyway, in the end of the last live, I peed my pants. (laughs) Did this really happen? <laughs> and then when I stood up afterwards, I was like, yeah, it really happened. <laughs> and I was absolutely hysterical. And <laughs> then I was like, I don't know what to do. So I was like, because Jonas were outside here. And I was like, I can't really like sneak into the bathroom without him noticing that something is weird. So I had to open the door and tell him. I was like, I think I just peed my pants. (laughs) And he was laughing so much. Not like at me, but with me because it was hysterically funny because I just wanted to share my story with all of you. And I was so into the whole situation that I kind of like, my whole system was just like shutting down. (laughs) Oh my goodness. Thank you so much. Like it means so much to see that you guys are laughing and saying thank you that I'm sharing this because this is hard. Like for me, this is hard stuff really 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 hard stuff to share but it is extremely funny and then the day after I thought that okay I'm getting a headache from this <laughs> the day after when I was in the co-working space I thought to myself I was like okay I have to share this with somebody <laughs> so I was like okay I'm gonna share it with my friend Liana who will come live later on hey Liana when you see this so I was like I'm gonna share this with Liana uh, and just the thought that I was going to share it with Lena made me laugh out loud in the co-working space. And the, everybody was quiet in the co-working space. So I was like sitting there and I'm just laughing out loud. And I had to kind of start to think about something like really, really boring so that I would stop laughing because I couldn't. And then when I got home, do you... <laughs> when I got home... I was like, I'm really going to record this uh, and share this with Diana. So I did. Uh, and she got back to me and she laughed so hard 
and I laughed even more. No, yeah, because then I thought also in the co-working space, I was like, okay, I'm going to tell her about the day that I peed my pants. And then I was like, <laughs> okay, this is, this is even more horrible. And I'm not sure, like, can I actually share this? But okay. I will, because the guide says this is just really, really, really important. And there is a reason we are on a business training. And this is the reason why I'm sharing like all of this stuff that I never thought, like I never thought I would share stuff like this. And the next thing that I'm going to say now is like even worse. Um, and I never thought that it took me about five years to share this with Jonas. Uh, and he's kind of the only person who I ever shared this with, except from Liana now, because I also shared with Liana. So there was another time, <laughs> there was another time when I was about like uh, 14, 15, and I've had like, um, how many of you have had like IBS, like you have issues with your stomach. And sometimes when you eat stuff, it's just like your stomach can't really handle it. And I wasn't used to that. And so we were out on a boat with my family and we were on this island and I took my dog for a walk and I was walking together with my cousin, uh, with Sarah. And I all of a sudden I was like, I really, really, really need to go to the bathroom. Uh, and there were like, no, like it wasn't one, one like outside, you know, those outside bathrooms that you can go to on an island or in the middle of the forest. But we were far away from that one. So I told Sarah, I was like, this is really, really, really getting really, really like I really need to go <laughs> to go to the toilet. And she was like, whatever you do, don't laugh. Whatever you do, don't laugh. And then she happened to say something without then she happens to say something without really thinking what she was saying. And I start, I, it cracked me up and I really felt like my whole, but like I couldn't hold it in. So I was like, I was running up <laughs> in the forest, really shitting my pants. And <laughs> when I was going to talk, I know, oh my God. And I never thought like, I'm feeling really brave now <laughs> to actually share this with all of you guys. So I never thought that I was going to share this. And then when I thought that I was going to share this with my friend, Liana, this is like last week. Uh, this is how I recorded the video for her. I'm going to show you because I could not stop laughing. It's hilarious. <laughs> much all right <laughs> i've been excited like the whole week i was like i'm really going to share these stories with you and i've been so 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 excited like a week or since last live <laughs> i've been so excited because what happens when we can actually be our true selves and that we can share what is really going on something happens do you feel now let me know after hearing this, do you feel, I hope you are going to answer what I think you're going to answer, otherwise I'm in trouble, but do you think more of a connection with me? Do you think more of me or less of me when I'm sharing these stories with you? Like if you're really tuning into your heart, does this make you like me more or less? I truly hope that you're going to say more. I guess you're going to say more. I really hope so. <laughs> it would be horrible if you did. <laughs> if you said that you liked me less. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, more. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, so, oh, oh my goodness. <clears throat> more. Thank you so much. And I, there is a point in this. There is a really, 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 really important point in this. How many times 
Have you felt afraid of sharing your truth? You're like me and I love you more. Thank you so truly much. Yes. How many times I've been myself too many times? <laughs> I love this. <laughs> and how hilarious is this? Like when we have a space where we can actually share this, but the the true, like the really, really true. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing. It means a lot to me. This is the thing. Every time. I have shared very personal things about my life where I thought, because I used to live with a belief that if people really knew who I was, then people were not going to like me. They could not love me if they knew my truth. How many of you can relate to that? If people really know through that or anybody else that I pee my pants as a grown up, do you, like, what, what's your feeling? Like, do you feel, and the pink pants is just one, <laughs> one example, but how many feel like if people really knew my truth, they, they wouldn't like me or they, I couldn't be loved? Thank you, Frida, for sharing that. And this is something so important because as we are moving into our businesses, this is, again, a business training. <laughs> But we do business a little bit different. And once we understand that we do business a little bit different, this is how you bring your power back. Because you can literally build a brand based on you, based on your story, based on the fears that you have overcome. Thank you. Thank you, Frida. Thank you, Erika, for showing that and sharing that. There are so many times, Sophia also, yeah. This is super, super common that we believe, this is why we keep so many secrets. Because we believe if people fully and truly knew who I am, I couldn't be loved and I couldn't build my business like that. How many of you have ever had the feeling, maybe not a conscious thought, maybe a conscious thought or maybe not, but maybe you have had a feeling that if I'm going to show up in my business, I have to be a certain way. I have to dress in a certain way. Or I have to look a certain way. I have definitely had that a lot. Uh, Jonah said that to me just the other day. And he said that it, he was, it, it was meant like a compliment that he said, well, it's such a big difference now when I hear uh, you making videos to people. Um, thank you so much for sharing. Super, super brave. And he said that it's a big difference nowadays when I make videos to people. He said, before when I heard you uh, make videos to people, you sounded a bit like, <laughs> he always does that. When he's trying to show me what personality I go into sometimes the posh one uh well that's the version of me <laughs> who believes i have to be a certain way in order to be a businesswoman funny huh what is your business personality like you don't have to shout it out loud but maybe if you have a pen and a paper Maybe you can take a few minutes right now to just write down or when you watch a replay afterwards, write down what do you believe? Who do you have to be in order to have a successful business? And I know from working with several of you on a private basis that many of you have had a feeling and a belief that having my own company, that's um, having my own company is not available to me. That's nothing I would like to have because having my own company means that I have to work super hard, that I never have free time, and that I'm stuck. And every time I've heard this uh, 
arguments or whatever we shall call them, beliefs, I've said like, that is so interesting because that is not at all my perspective. Not at all. Many times we have looked at the uh, generation above us, like maybe our parents or maybe even like grandparents who have um, com- like different companies. Many of them have what is called brick and water businesses. Basically, it means that you have a physical business. You have a physical business where you are stuck. Uh, <laughs> you're stuck in a flower shop. You are stuck as a hairdresser or whatever it is. Nothing wrong with that. But if you want freedom, that's probably not the business for you. Interesting, Frida. You you had a feeling that a business person is a boring person with no personality. So I really want us to take, by the way, if you feel that you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps. I saw that the last video, the last live we did was super, super, like YouTube brought it out to a lot of people, which is amazing. And I'm really, really, really grateful for that. And I think that YouTube did that because you guys, you liked it uh, and you commented, you, you did comment on a video and stuff like that. And that shows YouTube that it's something of value. So that would mean super, super, super much to me if you, all of you would just like to, to tap the, the like and uh, thumbs up. That would mean so much. Um, and if we believe, like Frida says here, a business boring person with no personality, do you, like Frida, you want to be a boring person with no personality? I guess that the answer is no, because I know that you're not a boring person, right? Thank you so much for, for the thumbs ups. Uh, and this is the thing. We, we, I'm going to say like have to, but we don't have to do anything. But if we want to, thank you for that note. Uh, if we want to grow our businesses, if we first of all want to start, a, start our businesses and then grow our businesses, we really need to figure out like, what do I believe about the business person? Who do I think that I have to become? And do I really want to become that person that I believe that I have to be? Yes or no? If the answer is no, then it is really, really time to re reassess, rethink, really look for other role models. Like Frida, in your case, if you believe that business people are boring people with no personality, uh, maybe you can take my peace story now and you can ask yourself, well, does Linda have a personality? <laughs> is she a business person? Um, as I said, my business have, has been my, uh, my only source of income. Hey, Johanna, did you fix your internet now? <laughs> my business has been my only source of income for the last seven years. That's kind of incredible, right? And I've had it only online. And I like to think that I do have a personality. <laughs> And I do like to think that because of my personality, you were all drawn to me because most of you did not just show up uh, randomly on YouTube. Most of you were actually clients of mine. Thank you. (laughs) I'm happy that you think I have a personality. And the interesting thing is that the more confident we become, like I said with the P story, that the more safe I feel, the more I can share. And this is the thing, when we are showing up in the world with our business, the more confident we can be in our business, the more confident we can be in our message, the more confident we can be in ourselves, the more we can show up authentically. And every time we show up authentically, we are going to connect with people. Who of you have done my online program called Master Manifester? This is an incredible, like, this is my VIP flagship online program. It's called Master Manifester. It's really about, like, how you are tapping in to your truest manifestation power. Sophia, you have. Fantastic. Okay. So... Remember that exercise, it's called pick a person and share your truth. And I know, Sophia, that you did this very recently with a few people in your uh, in your sur- close like family and friends and stuff. Oh, fantastic. So there's several, several of you who are here who have done the Master Manifesto program. Fantastic. 
when you did that exercise, pick a person and share your truth, what did you feel? Did you feel that you got more connected with that person or less connected with that person? Oh, Cecilia is also here. Hey, <laughs> I didn't know that. Fantastic. Okay, so I would love to know that. Did you feel, and Johanna also, amazing. Did you feel more connected or less connected when you picked a person more connected? Love that. Fantastic. More. Wonderful. So if we would, like if we would, more. Amazing. Wonderful. If we would bring that knowledge into, we don't want to put passion. Yep. Yep. Definitely. And some people, we are not going to, like, when we share our truth, this is a super good point that you're bringing up, Cecilia. Yeah. This is a super good point. With some people, they are not the right fit for us. Like, when we grow our businesses, they are not the right fit. And what we want to be doing when we are sharing our message, it is that we, will, we want to remove the wrong people, the people who does, do not resonate with our message. And we want to bring in the people who truly resonate. So we don't want to be like that middle, middle person, you know? I had wrote this actually in my notes. I was going to compare, like when you're picking a niche, I will talk a bit more about picking a niche. This is definitely like super random order. I'm sharing everything, but it is the perfect like divine order. This is how my soul wants me to share this. If you have a certain issue with your hair, for example, who like if you would go into your bathroom and you would look at your shampoo and your conditioner, do you have a certain specific thing? Like, is your shampoo and conditioner, is it for a specific kind of hair type? Or is it a general one? Is it maybe for dry hair? Is it for um, dry scalp? Is it for frizzy hair? Is it for uh, fat uh, or greasy hair? W what is your shampoo for? Is it for general? Like, suits everybody, doesn't do anything specific, just clean your hair? Or does it do something specific? I'm going to have some water while I'm waiting for you all to answer that. Specific? Yeah. My guess is, like, in all to all of you who are jumping in, watching the replay, please also bring in your comments. I'm going to go through them afterwards. I had so much fun. Uh, something specific. Thank you, Robin. I had so much fun, like after the the last live, specific reading all your comments. That was so much fun to me because I opened up and I shared like really parts of my whole life story. So it was like it means a lot to me when you when you comment. Uh, you will has three in one. Yeah, yeah. That's more common uh, with with men that they have something. Uh, general but for women specifically we tend to have something specific for for our hair <laughs> yeah so if I would have been talking to uh, a bunch of men I would have asked a different question but, but my thought was that most of you would have something specific for your hair okay so let's say that you are just pretend that you are a brand uh, you have a you have a, you are a shampoo brand let's say and you, you have a specific shampoo for helping frizzy and dry hair, which is the opposite probably of some of the other like hair stuff that you can sell. Like if you have something that is super, super specific, I can't wonder if I'm going to say this correctly now. Do you think that you can, like, do you want to attract the people with dry hair? frizzy hair or do you think that you want to attract the people with greasy hair if your if your brand is for dry hair 
do you want to attract people who have dry hair or people who have greasy hair? I guess that you're all going to say, yes, the dry one, exactly. This is the same thing with your personality and your message. When you have a message, if you can see yourself as a shampoo brand, what many entrepreneurs are really, really, really afraid of is to be specific. We are terrified I'm going to include myself because I've been there and even now, like I've gone really, really down in who it is that I'm helping, but still I can feel there is a bit of a fear because my <clears throat> target audience is very, very, very small. My target audience is freedom driven women, women who want that freedom in their lives and they're going through fertility struggles. So basically, I help freedom-driven women to overcome fertility struggles. It has taken me so long to understand and really like put a sentence of who exactly is it that I help. I knew it in my heart the whole time, but I was terrified because I was afraid of only sticking to the dry hair shampoo customers, if that makes sense. Does it make sense? I thought there was one part of me that thought, oh, maybe there is not enough women. Maybe there is not enough women who has dry hair. And maybe therefore I also have to talk to the people who have greasy hair, even though my message is for the dry hair. You understand? Fantastic. The more you can understand what your message is. A lot of people, if you listen or if you YouTube this, a business coaching or whatever, a lot of people are going to tell you. And I know, uh, Robin, when we spoke, I know that you said, oh, you, you will tell me <coughs> to pick a niche. <laughs> this is like the first thing. Everybody's talking about that, picking a niche, picking a niche. And basically, what, what, what does it mean to pick a niche when you are going to to build your entrepreneurship. So even if you have not yet started your business, maybe you don't even yet have a skill, or maybe you have started your business, everybody who is here on the call can benefit from this understanding. That when you hear people say pick a niche, it is basically the physical. Who is this? Who is my audience? Who is it that I want to talk to? But I want us to go much deeper than that. I don't want us to just pick a niche because many times we are going to pick a niche. <laughs> we are going to pick a niche from our head. And I'm interested to see if anybody can relate to this. When we hear, okay, I guess I have to pick a niche. If I'm going to be an entrepreneur, I have to know who it is that I'm talking to. And many, many people don't know who they are talking to at all, which is like even, I'm not going to say the word worse, but it's like even more difficult if you have no idea who you are talking to. But many people, they, uh, they pick a niche based on where they think that the money is rather than following our soul Your story, the story that you have lived in your life. Another business coach, you may hear something else. So you will pick and choose what resonates with you, okay? I believe that you have lived your life so that you can learn from your life and teach other people. Everything in my life that I have overcome, I use that in my business now. Every single part of it. I use the fact 
I went through, I was going through my whole fertility journey, realizing that I'm not really the right partner, left the marriage. So many of my clients go through the same thing. They realize that as they start to work with themselves, they realize that, oh shit, I'm not with the right partner. And then I can tell them, I know, I went through the same thing. And I know that you're on your right way. I didn't have anybody that could tell me that I was on the right way when I went through that. Because nobody had really walked that path before me. There were extremely few people. I only heard one person who said that <clears throat> when she sw- was with a different partner, not just swapped partner, but when she later on was with another partner, she got pregnant straight away. So I, I think but I didn't hear her tell it. It was more like I heard like about somebody. But my story of you who are my clients, or maybe you're not my clients yet, maybe you're interested in becoming a client in the future, or maybe not. But when you have heard parts of my story and you go through stuff in your life, have you found that it is helpful? to be connected with me, to hear my story? Yes or no? I would love to know. And I see that we are now 11 people on this live stream. I'm so, so, so happy. For all of you new people who have popped in, I would love to, if you would like to say hi in the comments, it means so much to me to know who is here. It means truly, truly, truly much to me. And also, if you want to share like what country you're from, that would be awesome. So I believe that you have gone through the struggles in your life. I'm going to just pick some random stories right now. I know that some of you have struggled with overweight. I know that, Sophia, yes, thank you. I know that some of you have struggled with um, having your spiritual awakening going through really hard physical challenges as you're going through your spiritual awakening, feeling drained, can't go to work, you know what I'm talking about. (laughs) Um, Like your whole body, your whole system shutting down to really clearly show you what is your right path and what is your wrong path. You missed the question. Uh, Thank you so much for answering that. Um, So when you have listened to all of my live streams, because you are are a part of the uh, Manifest Your Pregnancy program, uh, and everything you have heard from me, have you found it helpful to know that I went through the infertility struggles myself? And has it helped you to know, like, okay, Linda has been on this journey and she has gone the path before me? Has that helped? Uh, That was the question. Because what I want to come to, what I want, why I'm asking this question is because I want you to understand that when you are picking a niche or understanding, yeah, it has helped you. Okay, thank you so much for sharing that. Do you think that if you could have your business around what you have healed in your own life, Do you think, based on what you know about me, like you following me, do you think that other people can follow you based on what you have gone through? You just said that you felt that it was important for you to follow me because I've gone through it before you. Joanna says yes. Fantastic. And I know that for sure. I do that all the time when I look for coaches or mentors. I want to understand that that person has gone through similar thing like myself. So I'm going to share. Um, I don't know. And that's okay. If you know, we will go deeper into this. I think that that may be a confidence issue right now. Um, and that the more confident that you are getting, 
uh, and the more you feel that you have cured and healed yourself, the more confident you're going to be. Uh, so I can't remember if I shared this last week, but I think that is a super, super important. Uh, yeah, fantastic freedom. So when I came to, because Marissa, I, Marissa Pierre, my, my like previous teacher, I'm going to say previous teacher because she's not my teacher now. Um, when I, when I, I found her through the fertility stuff that she was talking about and I read her book. And then when I came to her training, uh, we were having a coffee break and I came up to her like she was just taking coffee and I came up to her and I said to her, I'm like, I'm, I'm in the two week wait. And she was like, what are you waiting for? And I'm like, I didn't say this, but I thought like, it was like my, I felt myself shutting down. <laughs> like here was a person that I took fertility advice from and I'm now telling her that I'm in the two week wait and she has no idea what I'm talking about. And that just showed me <laughs> that didn't feel good. <laughs> for all of you who are not on a fertility journey, um, which may be a few of you, but most of you are, the two-week wait is the two weeks when you wait to see, am I pregnant or not pregnant? So you have your ovulation, and then you are intimate with your partner, and then there are two weeks where you will then figure out whether you're pregnant or not, basically. So this period is called the two-week wait, and, and they're trying to conceive community. And I was so surprised when when Marissa Perry didn't know what I was talking about, and she asked me, well, what are you waiting for? <laughs> I'm like, well you know if I'm pregnant and I felt a bit stupid but it taught me so much how important it is to actually when we are building our businesses to be able to relate to the people that we help does that make sense because I kind of lost my trust she has an amazing method and I still sometimes use her method but I kind of lost my trust in her as a fertility mentor, if that makes sense. So where do I want to go with all of this? How many of you really know in your heart I know that some of you have just picked a niche you understand that yeah some of you have picked a niche because somebody told you to pick a niche <laughs> and then maybe you can relate to that to those people or maybe not I know that as I said in the beginning many people they just pick a niche because that's what they think that they're supposed to do but they don't really know how do I actually how do I become that dry hair shampoo for example i'm just going to use that as a metaphor because we will understand that i would say like to understand what is the deeper like okay i'm going to use one of you as an example because i know like i'm not going to say who you are but you will know who you are one of you amazing ladies i know that you are very very like you don't like IVF is against your values and IVF is against your values because you don't want to like uh, put a lot of unnatural stuff in your body and you also don't want to adopt a child because if you adopt a child then you don't know what the mom has been eating so you can't kind of control how uh, what kind of nourishment the child has gotten and you know who you are and maybe more more of you feel exactly the same way and i would say in this case it sounds like health natural healthy habits curing the body naturally that sounds like something that is really, really, really important to this specific woman. Can we agree? And if something is really, really, really important to us, we tend to become very passionate about it. 
And when we are very passionate about something, what do you think happens? Frida said that many business people are with no personality. So who would you rather buy a service from? Somebody who's super passionate about what they do or somebody who you can feel and sense that this person is just doing it for the money. They don't really, they can't really connect with me, but they are just like doing it for, it's a job basically. Who would you rather buy from? So they are selling the same thing basically, but one is super passionate about what they do and who they connect with. And the other person just have it as a job. Who would you rather buy from? While you're answering that, the passionate person, yeah. The passionate, yes. I love that you say that. You're so good students. <laughs> no, but you know this. That was a joke, but you know this in your heart. Especially when we are very sensitive women, we tend to feel other people. And I guess that the people that you want to work with in your like business, I guess that you want to work with people who you feel in your heart, like these are soulmate people. I thought about this the other day because when I texted uh, Liana that, that video or we not texted when i sent her the video and i was laughing and just crying so i couldn't speak and at the same time i was also connecting with oh robin you sent me a super nice uh, text after the last live and also nada sent me a super nice text in dubai after the last live like and several of you did and i was like i felt so much love in my whole heart, in my whole system. And I was like, all of this connection with all these beautiful, amazing women is because of my business. Okay, Robin, I did not meet through my business, but you were a part of the last week's business training in my business. And this is the incredible thing. I, I want you to tune into that. How would it feel to build a tribe of women or men or whoever it is that you want to serve. Maybe you want to serve both men and women in your business. But what would you feel like if you can just close your eyes for a little bit and just breathe that in? What would you feel like to build a tribe of people, of soul-connected people you feel so passionate about working together with that like, that you can't really you can't really stop thinking about them because you love them so much you have so much fun together how would that feel i would love to know in the comments how would that feel Also, like going into this live stream today, there were several several of you who sent me beautiful, amazing text messages like, oh, Linda, you rock. Good luck with the live tonight. Like it means so much. And I'm like, all of this is thanks to my work. And I know in the future that my babies will have so many at home. What is it called? Ants? Ants? <laughs> One is a little, uh, I guess, uh, aunties. <laughs> Do not be the insect. So my babies, my children, 
who are already like they're here hearing everything but when they're here in physical form they will have so many beautiful aunties around the globe thanks to my business so i don't see anybody of you answering the question what would it feel like to build a tribe based on your soul's message that you feel so happy together with it Would that feel like today you said i feel the same what do you mean i feel the same sorry i didn't understand okay amazing yeah it would feel amazing it really does it really really does feel amazing and this is why we were on a like we were on a business conference a but a fantastic it would feel fantastic yeah about the babies. Oh, fantastic. Okay, cool. Wonderful that you have, like, when your babies are here, you will have a lot of aunties uh, based on a tribe that you're building. Fantastic. Love that. I would feel very strong and very loved. Yes. Thank you so much for sharing this. And I want this to be kind of the root when we are thinking about our businesses. Because you can really, you can listen to a lot of uh, more of the masculine advice out there. I've, I've tested that. I've done it that way. But we tend to, like, if we are not really following our truth, and when I speak about our truth, I mean what we tend, what we tend to know inside ourselves, with our soul, with our heart. I work with a beautiful, amazing man at one point, and we did a future progression. We did a session where, because he was looking for his purpose in his life, and I, I took him through a session, and we met him in the future. And in the future, this beautiful, amazing man, he said, well, I, I work with other men, and I help them to connect with their masculine, with their masculinity, basically. And that was so truly beautiful. He felt that when he met himself in the future, he knew that his mission in life was to work with his men. Through fitness was one of the parts, but there was more to it. It was not only the physical, it was more about the, the connection and that he could help these men to really claim their true divine masculinity. And this kind of coach and this is what you like if any of you that I truly want to connect with with my mission with who I am here to serve. If you, if you feel right now, like I feel a bit lost, it, it sounds good what Linda's talking about, but I feel a bit lost right now when I don't know who that person could be that I truly want to connect with. I have actually, so this, this is amazing to be able to, to share this with you. This has been closed for two years, but I have opened my business personal one-on-one -on -one training back i've just opened it up so there are a few spots available i don't know how for how long i'm going to offer this but this is for for women specifically who want to work with me on a one-on-one -on -one basis where we can go deeper into your soul to truly figure out who are you here to serve and how can you build your message around that? How can you show up authentically? I will teach you some basics here now. But the basics are only going into kind of one part of your mind. So if you feel that, I, I want more, I need more to really, really, really dig deep into finding out what my soul is here to do. I have opened that program up. That is a four-month training where we work together. We do soul alignment sessions. We align you with your soul, with what your soul is here to do so that you can understand exactly what your niche is, 
not based on your head, what your head think will make most money, but what your soul knows that you, you are here to do. Because the wonderful, amazing thing is when you follow your soul, there will never be a lack of money. When you follow your soul and you let go of old limiting beliefs, money will come into you. Money will come easily. They will come effortlessly. That You will have an abundance around yourself. And we are going to take a bathroom break now. So I'm not making another peeing story. So let's make like two, three minutes of a break for everybody, <laughs> including myself, who want to go to the bathroom. And then I will continue. Is that right? Thank you. I'm asking if that is all right, but I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> because this is the beauty of having your own business. We are back. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Wonderful. Okay. Let's just wait a little bit more for people to come back. I really loved uh, what you said, Robin, about that you would feel very strong and very loved. Because this is the thing. Welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> this is the thing. When we build a business from our heart, not based on what the head think that we should have our business in. Like, have you ever... Maybe you've had it yourself or maybe you've had a friend. Like we definitely had some friends that like when they we, they came and visited Jonas, basically it, it was his friends, but I became friends with them. And they were really inspired about both me and Jonas working like on our own businesses and our own terms and stuff like that. And that woman in the couple, she was like, well, I have all of these business ideas. And she was telling us about her business ideas. And they were all like, I felt like, okay, all of this is just coming from the heart. No, sorry, from the head. They were definitely not coming from the heart. They were coming from the head. It was like, well, I can make different colors of um, dog poop bags. I can make, it was just a lot of stuff, like maybe good ideas. What she did not mention, like she had such a passion for, for planting flowers. And I know, Frida, you as well have such a passion for gardening and stuff like that. And if they would have truly believed that I can make money from my soul's purpose, then they would probably, I didn't jump in and start to coach them here. But then they could have probably understood that 
maybe their sole purpose is actually to write about gardening, maybe do a blog about that or, or a blog. I don't know. But all of these different ideas that they shared with us, they were just different ideas that they would probably never do because there was no passion in that. It was just ideas that she believed that she could make money from. Do you see the difference? How many of you have thought about starting a business or maybe you have started your business and you have picked a niche, but that niche was based on who you believe have money to pay for your service? Yeah, you picked a niche. Did you pick this niche, so Robin? Did you pick this niche? Uh, people have money in this niche, or did you feel truly connected with my niche? And I really feel super empowered with really connecting with these people. So I'm going to ask both Robin and Sophia, but because both of you now said that you have picked who you are helping, who you are serving. The thing, while you were answering that, the thing when when we are picking, when we understand, like, what is it re- like for, my, for myself, for example, to the outside, it looks like the physical, the 3D is that I'm helping women to overcome unexplained uh, infertility. Uh, so, for that, so, okay, the question was, uh, did you pick your niche because you believed, I don't even know what your niche is. This is interesting. Uh, did you pick your niche because you think that, oh, those with people, they have money to pay for my service? Uh, or did you pick a niche because you felt like, I'm truly, really connected with these people. I really, really, really want to help these people. You felt like, so basically one is more towards like coming from the head trying to figure out like can I make money from this and the other one is coming from the heart just knowing like these are truly the people I need to help so my truth is because I like all the work that I've done with growing ups I realized that whole of our stuff that we go through in our adult lives is a result of our childhood And everything, all the stuff that I've gone through with limiting money beliefs, with like, oh shit, I've gone through so much healing to become the version of myself that I am now. And I know for every single person out there, we need so much healing in order to become more and more true to ourselves. This is the fact. Uh, And there will always be more to work on (laughs) because once this lifetime is healed, we have other lifetimes to heal and stuff like that. It's just how it is. But then I thought like, okay, what, because I see my own story. Like I know that today, like five years after the infertility story ended, I know the day I become a mom, I know I will be such a different mom than when, if I would have gotten pregnant and become a mom like five or 10 years ago. And every single client that is now pregnant, I always ask them, do you feel that you are more ready now? Now, when you have healed a bit of yourself before your kids come in, they always say, yes, yes, I feel so much more ready now because we have done the inner work. And this is the truth, my true why. I believe that if women, this is why I'm not necessarily, I'm super happy when I help people get pregnant really, really fast. That's not up to me to decide. That's their soul's plan. And this is how, what I had to, to realize, like I've gone through that in my head many times, but my true why, why I do what I do is so that women can get a chance to heal themselves in several areas of their lives so that they can start to understand their worth, so that they can create the freedom that they want, so that they can remove the limiting money beliefs, so that they can really start to become happy, fulfilled people. Because I believe 
once they become happy, fulfilled people, or women in this case, and the children come in after that, the children will have such a good, amazing foundation as they are arriving into planet Earth. Because everything that we as grown-ups believe, how we behave, it is like given to our kids straight away. And this is this is my true why. This is what keeps me, like I can be up at night and really like, how can I solve this even more? How can I reach to more people? Because I feel in my heart, this is so important. This is so important because I know that my job is so much bigger than what it looks like from the outside that I'm like helping women get pregnant. Yes, I help women get pregnant, but my deepest, deepest, deepest why is that I help heal the world. I create a better or more healthy or however we want to look at it, new generation of kids because their parents are healed. That's that's like the, the core, the reason of why I do what I do. Does it make sense? So we can have a niche that looks a certain way to the outside, like it does with, oh, Linda helps women get pregnant who can't get pregnant for some reason. She helps them with that. Uh, oh, good. I've missed your uh, answer. So I'm going to read them. But then we can have like our... We need to have that core, the understanding of why do we do what we do? Because if we are going to last in the long run, and if we are going to show up, because this is like, if you can do two things, basically, in your business, there, there are several steps. And we, as I said last time, this will be a live training that will be several different steps or several different parts. But basically, in your business, if you can prospect people, meaning that you connect with people, you talk to people, you, you, you prospect them. Hey, this is a potential prospect for my business. Does anybody understand that? Like, hey, you are a potential prospect for my business. I call that you go out and you prospect people. You prospect people. If you can learn how to prospect people and follow up with people, your business is going to grow. There are several reasons why people do not <laughs> go out and prospect people because one of the worst fears that we as humans have is fear of rejection. We are terrified of being rejected and this is why we don't promote our businesses. This is why we don't connect with people. This is why we don't show up in the world. This is why we do like hide and all other stuff we do because we are terrified of being rejected. So one part of this, who can feel that? I'm, I'm afraid of being rejected by other people. I am afraid that people will tell me that I'm a bad person. I am afraid that people will tell me no. I'm afraid that people will say I'm not interested in your stupid shit, whatever it is. Who can relate to the feeling that I am afraid of being told no, like go away? Yeah, you're terrified of that. Fantastic. Good. It's not good that you're terrified of that, but we, as a part of this training, this is something that we will go through. Okay, fantastic. So, Robin, I choose the niche because I want to solve the health challenges from entrepreneurs in their business schedule. Amazing. Uh, do you feel, this is not like a trick question, but do you feel um, do you have some own story from your own life that really triggered you to want to help people, uh, busy entrepreneurs, to solve their health challenges? Do you have a personal story? Or do you have a story of somebody that you helped that you felt like, this means so much to me? And while you're answering that, I will, um, you don't have to, like, if you, if you don't want to answer that, you can just tell me I don't want to answer that. But I, I just want to help uh, 
because when I ask you questions, I think it's super, super valuable to everybody. So this is why I ask uh, sometimes individual questions. Uh, Frida, I don't know what to pick. I love I love coaching and gaming too, besides that gardening. Yeah, fantastic. My belief with you, Frida, is that you have... Is it okay, Frida, if I share what I think with you? I want your... Yes, before I say anything. Uh, so, Fida, the first time you picked your niche, you chose from your head, and now you chose from your heart. Amazing, fantastic. Okay, Fida. So, the gaming could be one thing that you can definitely maybe coach people on. I'm not really sure how that works. I would say, though, that I believe that you, because you are such a spiritual person, and you, 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 in this lifetime and in past lives, you have gone through a lot of trauma like many of us have. So you're such a light being. And because of all the trauma that you have been through, you can't really see your true purpose right now. And I know that is the same for several of you, that you can't really see your true purpose because of all the shitty stuff that you have gone through. A lot of us have gone through something called the witch, um, the witch hunt. I think we may have talked about this in the, the last live we did. We are really, really terrified of showing up in the world because of the fear that if I show my spiritual gifts, so this is actually a question that I have on my formulaire when people are applying to have a free consultation call with me, I ask them, do you feel that you have spiritual gifts? that you are afraid to even look at yourself and most women say yes and this is so interesting for me because it was the babies who told me that i needed to have that question i didn't come up with that question from my head they told me that and like from everything i've learned since i know that so many of us have something called the witch wound we are um we still carry a lot of pain and trauma from past lives where we have been burned where we have been ripped apart i did tell you the story right last time where i was raped and ripped apart right because i looked into people's future so this is something that we are going to clear we will have a specific session uh in this live training where we will clear the witch wound specifically yes so i believe that when several of you are going to clear the witch wound you will know for sure more and more and more what you are really here to do. Because right now, you, you most likely cannot see that because there is so much terror and fear. Um, yeah, so the interesting thing about what I said, like the basic two things that you need to do in your business that will bring in so many leads if you're actually, and lead, when I say leads, I mean bringing in people and prospects to your business. It is to prospect people and follow up with people. Prospect people, as I said, it is to find new people that could be potentially interested in your business. Uh, part two, following up with people. Not everybody is going to be ready to buy your service straight away. And it is your job to follow up with them. And I am really, really glad that I did a network marketing business before I came into this business. Um, Super, super glad that I, I had that experience with the network marketing business. How many of you have been in a network marketing business? Do you know what it is? Have you been in a network marketing business? Basically, the whole idea with the network marketing business is that you share the business plan and you build teams. And I didn't have many friends, so I very soon had to go out and prospect people. I had to go out and talk to random people in the streets and share with them my business idea which is um terrifying for most people and this is why most people never succeed in a network marketing business but also this is why most people never succeed in their um spiritual business either because they are terrified of people's opinions they are terrified of people saying no um and i have had I've had three different women who worked for me, who worked for Fertility Alignment, and their only job was to connect with prospects, 
to re-engage, like to, to follow up with old people, not old people, but people who I used to be in contact with for my business. Uh, so and connect with new women who were potential prospects for fertility alignment. And one of those women I had to, because of things were going on, we, we couldn't, she couldn't keep working with that for me. But the other two women, they both quit because it was too hard. It was too hard to, to prosper people. And that was for my business. So it wasn't even for their own business. And when you have your own business, that's even worse because now you are so connected. Like for all of us who have a business, you know, like your own business is like your own baby. It's like a part of you. So I just want to say like most people, they never go out and prospect because they are terrified of rejection. And this is why it's, hard for most people to bring to to build their businesses because without you being out there prospecting people no people can come in uh so for example robin i'm gonna read what you said yes my dad he was always busy and he was very unhealthy uh he got diagnosis uh, i can't really it's some form of inflammation five years ago we almost lost him. Now he is still recovering and I'm helping him becoming healthy. Wow, this is incredible. What a story. Um, see, what a story. Like when I first read who it is that you help, I didn't feel, I didn't feel emotion. But now as you're sharing this, I feel so much emotion as you can see in my eyes. Can everybody see this in my eyes? This is the thing, when you know why you do what you do and when you can go out and share this, when you can share what it is that you do, share a story. That's how I brought in so many clients from the business in the first beginning and have since. I've shared my story. There have been times where I did not share my story. No clients coming in. But every time, like especially in the beginning, I was so, I was so excited because remember I told you I started my own ovulation. That was a kind of a miracle in itself. And I realized how much power we have in our subconscious mind. And I started to tell people, people were like, what do you do? I'm like, I'm a hypnotherapist. I do hypnosis. And they were like, huh? And then we always had a fun conversation. So people have asked me like, oh, Linda, do you tell people that you do hypnosis? Because people may think you're a bit weird. And I'm like, yeah, they may think I'm a bit weird. But most of the time, it's actually a very, very funny conversation starter. Like, if you tell people what you do many times, like, you don't have to have a quiet, boring time with people because you're just jumping into a funny conversation. And that's happened all the time when I share that I work with hypnotherapy. And I'm like don't look into my eyes because you don't know what's going to happen. And I make a joke about it because I know that many people believe that it's stage hypnosis where somebody sounds like a duck or something. But then I share it with people. Uh, and I still do to this day sometimes when I'm not too bored of my own story <laughs> because I've shared it now so many times. But I shared with people. I was like, I was so stuck in my own life and nothing was working out for me and I went through infertility and then I realized that when I searched everywhere and like the doctors couldn't help me they said that IVF was my only option uh, and like putting a lot of hormones and stuff and in, injecting my body and I didn't want to do that so I, I searched 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 search, and then I found a connection between our subconscious mind and our fertility within three weeks I started my own ovulation and off I started my own ovulation I started to realize that I could do so many more things when I realized the power of my mind so now I'm here living an awesome amazing life that I absolutely love waking up super super happy in the mornings and I make money I have my own company that I could like I share this story and people were like does this also work with um finding your soulmate and I'm like yeah sure it does in the beginning you see in the beginning, I did not really have a niche, but I had passion. So whatever people ask me, like, oh, does that work for blah, 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 blah? I'm like, yeah, it does. So I brought in a lot of clients just by talking to people. And I'm going to share with you another story. 
when we were, uh, so we were still on the training. We were in London and we were four women and we were going to take a cab back to our uh, house that we rented in Airbnb. We started to talk to the cab driver. Like we were all like ladies excited about our hypnotherapy training and he was like oh what was your occasion like what were you doing in london and we were like well we are here with marissa peer do you know marissa peer and he was like no i don't know marissa peer but then i started to ask him questions and i figured out that he had a daughter who studied in like university or something and she was just going through some really really hard time because it was really really hard stuff that she needed to learn and i was like well with this method that i do i could help her with her studies, I could program her subconscious mind to become more effective. Do you think that she would like that? And he was like, yeah, that would be awesome. And I was like, fantastic, you can have my number. And then, this is the trick. I never, never, never let anybody go away with my number because that's giving the ball away. Like I'm guilty, I'm, like right now I'm giving you the, the core of how I build my business, connecting with people and making sure they don't run away with the bowl <laughs> because many people when they get the bowl they are not going to call you back because they are going to forget about it or think that oh maybe that wasn't so important or whatever it is so i didn't really connect with people basically on phone numbers but i also always ask like, are you on facebook i'd rather use facebook than instagram but this is just personal preference if you can use instagram use instagram but I asked people like, um, okay, so you can add me on, on Facebook. And then I brought up and they were like, oh yeah, that would be awesome. And because I said, well, you can add me on, on Facebook and I can send you more information. So I'm kind of telling them, I'm going to send you more information once you add me on Facebook. And they were like, perfect. Sounds super, super good. And I'm like bringing up my phone fast as possible. And I'm like, what's your name on Facebook? And I will find you and, and you can easily just add me back works every time um so that's how i make sure that i have their contact information and straight away i send them a message and i'll say hi this is linda we just talked super lovely to meet you um tell me more about that the issue that you were going through or whatever it was you see the power of this like this i became an expert in this and this is what most people like, you see, I had three people working for me and they were only prospecting people online, not all, not even talking to people in real life. And they quit because it was too hard, too scary, too terrifying. Most people are completely terrified of this and they will never do it. And most of you will never do this. But I know that there are a few brave ones here. Who, are, who is the brave ones? Who are the brave ones? I would love to know. When you start to talk to people about what you do, like Robin, in your case, if uh, I'm going to say, hey, Evelina, happy that you're here. Um, no issue, you missed the, the, the first part. You can, you can watch the replay. Uh, so... Who feels like, shit, I want to be brave and actually start to talk to people? D like, guys, this is incredible. This is, you, you would, fantastic. I'm super, super happy. I'm going to be your biggest support. Like, this is, this is the magic. Like, it sounds so easy. Most people will never do it. But if you would show up, Robin, telling people about that story, like, oh, well, I, I work in health. I have my own company in health. I, I have this thing. My, my dad, he worked very, very hard. Um, fantastic, Evelyn. You talk to people all the time. So if you would tell your story and you tell them that if, for example, you talk to a busy entrepreneur or whoever you talk to, and you tell them your story, like you, you tell them how you almost lost your dad because he had his schedule and stuff like that. And then you connect with people and you will see some people are not going to be interested at all. They are not going to ask any further questions, but some people are going to ask you like, oh, what, what kind of a healthy lifestyle are you promoting? And then you can say, Robin, well, um, I, I can send you more, like if you're interested for yourself or for somebody that you love, I can send you more information. 
do, do you have Facebook? You can add me on Facebook or Instagram, wherever you use LinkedIn. And they will probably say, yeah. Uh, if they don't have LinkedIn, like I don't use LinkedIn. So <laughs> I've said that many times when an entrepreneur asks me, like, do you have LinkedIn? I'm like, no, but I have Facebook. So just have a few options, like if they don't have whatever it is that you are using so that you can actually, so, so that you don't miss them, basically. Does this make sense? Uh, so this is the true like so we can do this when we talk to people in real life so Liana who I've heard me talked about it was the, the one of my best friends who I sent this video to uh, the shitting my pants video <laughs> uh, she uh, yeah fantastic okay cool Facebook so Liana uh, she was actually somebody I did this with uh, Uh, I'm going to read what you said very, very soon. So I did this with Lena, for example. So Lena, when you come in live uh, or replay, sorry, Lena couldn't be here live. Uh, so she was one of the awesome people who said like, oh, Linda, you rock. You enjoy your live. I will watch it afterwards. She's amazing. Uh, so Lena, when you come live uh, or replay, sorry, please share your part of the story because I know I know the answer to this already, but I want Lena to say it and I want you all to read Lena's comment because that will show you so much of why she chose to work with me. So Lena and I, we, we didn't know each other. We came to an event with Gabrielle Bernstein for she is the author of The Universe Has Your Back. So Gabrielle Bernstein was in Sweden and Lena had a choice of going either to London to watch her or to Sweden, to Stockholm. And she was like, well, my whole head was telling me to go to London because that's more cool. But I chose to follow my gut instinct, my, my intuition, and I went to Stockholm. As soon as we got off the bus and we got closer to, the, because apparently we were on the same bus, and as soon as we get closer to the hotel where the event is, she was a bit lost for the way. She didn't know where to go. And I was like, are you lost? Are you going to Gabby Bernstein? And she was like, yes, I am. And I was like, I think I know the way. So we connected straight away. And I told her my life story. <laughs> uh, so I told her. Like, I just, I did a pitch, right? You remember. I told her how, how I used to be so stuck in my life, how I started my ovulation, how I'm now transforming my life and all of that. So this was in the beginning of my story. So I just moved away from Lulu and I started like my old my new life and I was just so excited and Lena shared with me some stuff that she was going through and I was like I'm sure that I can help you like I know that I can help you basically uh, so we shared information so first we we clicked we became friends and then I was like yeah sure sure I can help you and then we had a call uh so after like like we got separated there and then she went back to Germany and then we had a call and I told her about my service. I was like, this is how I can help you. I know that I can help you because I've been through the same thing here again. When we, when we have confidence, it's something about our confidence for myself. I knew that I could help her because we had very similar lives and especially feelings. The feelings were very much the same. So I knew that I was going to be able to help her. And uh, so she bought, I think my, pro Lena, when you, when you come on, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think my program that I offered back then was a four month program. I think it was was it 4,000 USD, like 40,000 sec for a four-month program? I think it was like that. Um, and afterwards, Lena was super, 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 super happy that she did this. And it really was a start of like her whole transformation story. So, uh, and then we have become even more close friends and she has visited me in Stockholm and I've been in Germany with her. Uh, an amazing, amazing friend of mine, but she started out as a client. And uh, so I would love to hear from you, Lena, when you come on, like, what was it that really made you feel like, hey, I'm ready to do this investment? Because this is important for everybody who wants to start their business or have their business to bring in the first 10 clients. What was it that you felt that I want to invest with Linda? I want to invest in myself together with Linda. 
And for all of you also who are here now who have already invested, most of you who are here right now, you have already invested in working uh, together with me for the benefit of your improvement. So you can just ask yourself, or maybe it would be super helpful if you would write it in comments. What was it that made you feel like, hey, I'm ready to do this investment in myself? Or was that? Do you remember? Yeah. Okay, Frida. So I think what you say is that um, that you have like a wound, a wound be because before you used to feel abandoned, like left outside of the tribe and being like bullied and feel like you are not welcome to the tribe. And it's a big wound. And yes, I, I would definitely, it's, it's very, very beautiful that you see this and I'm so grateful that you are sharing this because it's so important like most of us earth angels and most of us here are earth angels we have been feeling like we talked about that in the uh, the other live that we did about a week ago most of us have been feeling very very abundant we have been feeling so different because we are quite different in a good way in an amazing way but we didn't know that before so that was the reason why we felt very, very different. And we didn't feel that we fitted into the tribe. And this is why we are now even more afraid of going out and talking to people because we are super afraid of being abandoned again, being yelled at or being um, that people will ignore us or whatever. But this is really the key. Like when we can start, like, you're, like each one of you, could really blow up your business in a good way, right? super, super fast if you just had the confidence in going out and talking to people. Robin, I have a challenge for you. <laughs> and if anybody else wants to accept the challenge, you are more than welcome. Robin, would you be willing, would you accept the challenge to talk to 10 people Share your story, your father's story, or whatever story of your clients that you want to share, but really sharing from your heart. Would you be willing to talk to 10 people? Or share it somehow, like it could also be like you're sharing it on a live, a Facebook live, or sharing it on camera. This is another thing that I wrote on my notes, super, super important. It's so easy to hide behind a photo and write a text. Anybody can do that. But to show up on camera, to show your vulnerability, this is super scary for most people. If you feel that, if I can convince you enough today <laughs> that being on camera is a good thing for your business, and you feel that, hey, I understand that it is a good thing to be on camera, but I'm terrified and you feel that you would like a boost to get comfortable in front of the camera, down in the description box below, I did promise you this last time as well, so now I've organized so that you actually have it here in the comments below, I have an offer for you with 50% off. This is 50% off my amazing program called Get Comfortable in Front of the Camera. And I'm going to give you the code, because you need to use a code to get 50% off, 50% off. So it is called camera with, with big letters, with capitals, camera slash happy slash mother, or maybe it's not a slash actually. I'm not sure what, the, what that symbol is called. I'm going to put it in here. You want a coupon code. I'm going to put it in here. Because when you can 
it's scary even write text yes i know and this is why it is so 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 important like when we when we are that scared it's going to be like from my perspective it's going to be really 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 hard to build our businesses if we are scared to show up and uh, this is why it's so important that you are here which you are so this is an amazing amazing step and i'm super grateful i'm super proud of you that you are admitting that but that, that is the code the coupon code camera um what is it called <laughs> it's not slash because slash is that well camera happy mother uh, then you get 50 percent off that amazing amazing program that is a step-by-step -step program of how to get comfortable in front of the camera because the thing is, when you show up on camera and you show your truth, you speak your story, like Robin, for you, for example, you share the story, you, you tell your why, basically. You tell like, hey, I help people, business entrepreneurs who have a business schedule and they compromise their health and I help them to bring their health back so that they can enjoy time with their kids or whatever it is that you understand that they will be able to do when they have their health. And share this reason, the reason behind it. This is so important. Like when we can share, can share the reason behind why we do what we do. How many of you feel that when you have heard my story, it makes so much sense of why I do what I do? Say yes. <laughs> because it does. Like we truly want to connect with people. We are creatures of connection. And Robin or Evelina or Fidida, whoever you are, Cecilia, when you can share your story, when you can share your story later on, for example, this other lady, you know who you are, who has, who knows that you don't want to do IVF, you don't want to adopt a child because you want to know exactly what's going into your body and the nourishment your child will have. When you share your story in the future, when you, if you choose to work something, for example, with a healthy eating or whatever it is, and you can share that story. You will be able to connect with people. People, some people are going to be very like you. They will feel the same way. When I tell people that for me, IVF is completely a no-no. Like for me, it feels like I'm going to rape my own body. And some women, they're like, you're crazy. But other women, they're like, I truly understand what you mean. I feel exactly the same. We will attract our tribe by speaking up our truth. And when we can speak our truth, like, for example, if I would have posted a picture instead of going live today, do you think that that would have been a difference in the kind of value you would have gotten out? You would not have been able to laugh at my piece story, <laughs> for example. No, but honestly, do you think that it is a difference if you just see me post a picture and then write a text or if you actually can see me here you it's almost like you can touch me it's almost like it can touch me. it makes a difference right i know that it makes a difference um so this is the thing when you can show up on camera and i know for example so for that you have started to show up on camera and i'm so to be proud of you it's amazing uh, and there was one thing as well that i want to say about that like when we are this is like technical stuff but uh it's just a little, little thing like when we are doing youtube for example this is going to be so long if i share everything that i want to share but for example if we are doing youtube sometimes i have just taken the link from youtube and just posted it. and i see some of you doing this and this is why i just want to give this as an advice uh if you just take the youtube uh, uh it is right <laughs> super super brave so if you just take your youtube link and you post it on uh, facebook for example or youtube uh youtube no sorry facebook or instagram facebook or instagram they're not going to promote your post because they don't want people to leave their platform so a better way would be to kind of write a regular post, for example, or, or on Facebook, write a regular post, and then say, like, you, you can find a link to my video in the comments below. That seems to be working. Uh, that seems to be working better. 
than just posting the, the link to the video and say like, hey, go and watch this one. So we have to be kind of clever with how we do this. And now the last weeks I have promoted like in stories and stuff like that. I have promoted like this live event and I've said like, remember this live event, la la la. Uh, but I didn't really, I didn't post these spamming links. And this is also so important. Like when we are going into to starting to share our message, make sure that we don't spam people. People hate spammers. They, they don't want spammers. There are so many spammers out there and we don't want to be a spammer. Spammer. Yeah spammer we don't want to be a spammer basically so make sure that when you are like give value think like give value so have a look through for all of you who have already started your businesses have a look through your your facebook or wherever you are showing up and you see what, what does it look like does it look spammy do i promote stuff all the time does it look clear what it is that I do, what I'm offering to people? Have a look through that uh, because that will help you to kind of get an idea of, okay, when, when people are coming to my page, do they understand what I do, what I can help them with? And Sophia, you said that you were so scared when you did your first video. And this is the thing. That's, that, that was another thing that I wrote written on my notes. Take action. I soon, and this is exactly what you did. You took action. Action will cure the feel. Like as soon as you get an impulse, just do it. Just do it. And I've said this before. As long as it's not like a dangerous stop, like jump in front of the train, don't do that one. But if you get like a business impulse, like go live. That's what I did this morning when I received an impulse. I was gonna have a meeting, but before the meeting, like twenty minutes before the meeting. My whole system were like, you need to do a live telling people why they can't, why they are feeling stuck right now, why they don't feel free. So I was like, okay, I better do it. My soul is calling me. And that's exactly what you did, Sophia. Your soul was calling you and you did it. That's how we grow. Sometimes it leads to nothing, but you become a more upgraded version of yourself when you do that. Uh, yes. I'm like, where, where shall I even go? Okay, do we want more? Do we feel like we're done for tonight? Or do we want more or what? Thomas just sneezed in the background. <laughs> okay, let me know. Do we want more? I can go on for a little bit. I'm going to have a piece of my apple. more okay thank you <laughs> let's talk about pricing how do we price our services so this was something that evelyn and i spoke about so as i said last time that evelyn was the the course the course of why we are having this live training like everything we do basically uh, for me everything i do also like everything is marketing I'm not showing up here only to be nice. Yes, I am showing up to be nice and to teach you stuff. But my intention was, so I'm like, with this new YouTube channel, I'm building my new YouTube channel. And I'm like, how can I help people to find my content? And then I saw somebody, she said that, well, I, I do lives on my YouTube. And I'm like, that's super, super clever because then you can bring people from other platforms like promoting it on Facebook or Instagram and bring people to your YouTube channel and they can be live together, which is an amazing thing. So I was like, I'm going to do that. So when Evelina had this issue with her business, not really knowing like, how do I bring in my clients? I'm like, let's do live. Let's do it on YouTube because that's going to grow also my YouTube at the same time while I'm helping you, which is amazing. So again, always think about like marketing perspective. Uh, what was it that I was going to say? Pricing. Pricing. How do we price our service? Earlier in this training, we talked about 
finding a niche. Like, who is it that you help? For this to work, we need to be really, really confident in methods that we are using. We need to be confident that we can actually help people. We can't charge people for a method. This is what I told Evelyn when we discussed this. People don't want your method. Okay, maybe certain people who are like, they're also like healers or light workers, maybe they are looking for a Reiki healer or a rapid transformational therapist, maybe. But most of the time, people are not looking for that. Most of the time, people who want your service are people who have a problem. They have dry hair, like the, the shampoo example. What would you... Coming back to the shampoo example, what would you pay a higher price for? A general shampoo that is like good for everything, cleans your hair, or a shampoo that is specifically for your exact like hair type, your hair color, like it is super, super, super specific to your exact like needs for your hair. What shampoo would you pay more for? I'm just going to eat while I'm waiting for you. <laughs> which, which shampoo would you pay more for? Cecilia, are you still there? I saw you in the comments in the beginning, but I have not seen you since. I just wanted to shake if you were still here. My belief and my knowing is that you would pay more for a specific shampoo that would help you to solve a specific problem. Yes. Thank you. This is exactly the same thing as you are building your business and pricing your service. If you are, for example, a Reiki healer, do not go out and look for what do other Reiki healers charge? Rather, go out and look for, if, if you are going to compare, like, but it could be a good thing to just have an idea of what other people are charging. But don't let that limit you for what you are going to charge. But it could be a good idea to get an idea. <laughs> good idea to get an idea. What are people charging for the result? People do not want Reiki healing. Now, I'm just going to use Reiki healing as an example. Most people do not want just Reiki healing. Like the reason, honestly, the reason why I've never tried Reiki healer, I have Reiki healing. I have friends who are Reiki healers. I've never tested Reiki healing. And the reason why I've never tested Reiki healing is because nobody told me or could explain to me what it would do for me. I'm not interested in trying different methods. I'm interested in getting results. I'm interested in getting something for my hair. Does that make sense? I'm not interested to just try a different bunch of shampoos. I want something that is specifically for the needs of my hair. Does it make sense? And I'm willing to pay more for something that I know will help me. And this is why it's so important that we don't go out and we promote, oh, I'm a rapid transformational therapist, or I'm a Reiki healer, or I'm a massage therapist. It's much better if you can say, I, um, I help like, um, like women or people, I help entrepreneurs to have a busy schedule to get into healthy habits so that they enjoy more freedom or health time with their families or whatever it is but that's specific right for me it is specific i'd say that i help freedom driven women to overcome fertility struggles and create happy mommy lives that they love also specific 
this is how you price your service. If you're going to look, what are other people charging for that kind of service? Have a look what they are charging for the result, not for the service. Because most people in coaching, well, now there are many, many coaches who start to learn that, hey, it's a good thing to charge a lot of money for your service because the clients will actually get better results when they invest money in their own journey they will be more committed like i've seen this so many times whenever i've given away something for free those people never got the same results as the people who paid for my service the people who pay the most for my service are the people who got the most out of my service because they have a different commitment just tune into that for yourself if you are buying something if you are getting something for free or you are like actually investing say 20,000 sec, sec uh, that would be like 2,000 USD or euro. If you would get it for free or you would actually pay like 2,000 euros, you would probably pay more attention if you paid a lot of money for it, right? Same thing when you're working uh, like your clients. When they invest time and money together with you they're going to get so much more out of your service how we clear the pricing and definitely not we don't um uh, we don't price our time again we charge for results, don't our, not our time. Coming back to the prospecting, another client, we can, we can for sure work for free in the beginning, no issue with that. So how, whatsoever it's much better to bring in people working with people for free to just get the momentum going rather than working with nobody for example there is a group a facebook group in sweden called Heja Livet, like hello life and this is a group where there are like this is a really really big group and there are a lot of like amazing women in that group and i remember it was like many 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 years ago I needed clients, like I didn't have so many clients at that point. And I saw somebody in that group and she said something with anxiety or something. And she was like, can anybody give advice? Like I wake up with anxiety every morning. And I wrote to her, I was like, well, I have cured that for myself. I, I used to have that. And, and this is something I actually do. I help people with, with morning anxiety. I, I work with a method called rapid transformation therapy. If you would be interested, I can give you a session for free. She contacted me straight away. She was like, I would love that. She actually came over to my home. We did a session. She was super, super, super happy with the results. She, she felt so much better straight away. Like, this is the thing. We want to be able to really make sure that we can help people, that we're not just saying that we can help them, but we actually can help them, right? She was super happy with the results. And... Um, then she told her uh, her boyfriend. So I was at a party where I was introduced to her boyfriend. I told her boyfriend about what I do, shared my story, classic, shared my story. He became a client of mine because he was just intrigued. Like he was like, can you help me with this? And I'm like, yeah, I can. I think the program he was also on, I think the same program that Liana was on, which was the four month program. I think he paid 4,000 4, USD, 4,000 euros, 40,000 sec. That came through that friend or that woman who came through Hela Lubet, who I did a free session for. And then she recommended also another friend. So another friend, actually her best friend, also did the same coaching program. So that was 80,000 sec coming in just from those two people from that free person that I first connected with. Do you see, I prospected her and through her, I met two other people. 
that were on my coaching program. You see how this makes sense? So when we can be out there, we have like we literally we have to quote unquote prospect people. When we can go out there, connect with people and say to people, hey, I can help you if we believe that we can help them. That's how we bring in clients. But this is the thing that most people are not going to do this. Who would accept this challenge to go out and look for people who you can help? Whether you are going to charge or you're going to do it for free. Who is willing? Hey, Molly. Welcome. <laughs> you're like two, two hours late, but that's totally fine. <laughs> so you have two amazing hours that you can go back and watch. And I'm sitting here eating my apple because I need some energy. <laughs> so, do we get this? Who? I have not heard anybody say yes yet. Uh, so maybe we need to do that clearing first. To really clear that, like, because this is the thing, like, when we can connect with people, either we can do that in Facebook groups. Got it. You got it what? Are you going to do it? Are you going to connect with people or got it what? <laughs> um, so for example, I know that Marie, who is not here, but you will probably watch this afterwards. I know, for example, Marie, you, you can communicate with animals. You could go out, like go to, and just using Marie as an example then, you could go to Facebook groups where people are talking about animals and maybe like different dog groups or cat groups. I don't know, whatever groups there are out there. But you want to find groups, if you're on Facebook, you want to find groups with people who are talking about this issue. Maybe they're having a hard time to communicate. And you can say, Marie, in this example, you can say like, hey, I... I have this gift that I communicate with cats or dogs or whatever. If you want, I could I could offer you a session for free and we can we can see if that could help you. Most people when you say something is free, they're willing to test, like even though they think it's a bit woo-woo, maybe, but like they can test. But you always want to make sure that if you are doing something for free. If you're doing something for free, you always want to get something back. So if you're doing something for free, make sure that you bring at least that you get a testimonial out of it. Preferably a video testimonial, but otherwise a like written testimonial. Okay, Frida, <laughs> you asked if we got it and you said I got it. Fantastic. I can't remember because I talk so much, but I'm super, super happy that it was something that you got. <laughs> Thank you. And Sofia, okay, you said that you are up for the challenge, which makes me so truly, truly happy. And this is what I mean. There will be a certain people of you who will go out, you will accept the challenge and your business will grow. I know that, Sofia, if you take this seriously and you go out there, you connect with people, you help people, you can give, uh, in, in, for example, in a Facebook group, if somebody asks a question that you think that you know that you could help them with, you can help them. You can kind of coach them like if they're asking for a solution. I've learned also that many people, uh, they just want to whine. They just want to complain. They, they don't really want an answer. So we have to be a little bit like mindful uh, of <laughs> how we are saying things and stuff like that. Uh, but definitely like facebook groups i've had really 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 much success in connecting with amazing people in facebook groups um both men and women and both like for whatever different niche i was in so obviously nowadays i'm only working with women but uh even before when i when i work with both men and women so that's that's really one thing like prospecting and then following up so another example of prospecting Jonas and I we were at a restaurant actually it was on my birthday so it was in January uh, this year we were in a very nice restaurant that Jonas had fixed for for me as a surprise for my for my birthday and we were there like having a really nice time and then in the middle of our dinner it came in a super nice lovely lady with her mom 
and they were sitting like in in the other side of the restaurant but we kind of had a moment because she said like is this your jacket because she was going to sit where jonah's jacket were so we kind of connected with her but then we, we didn't say anything more than yes it's jonah's jacket and then when we were going to leave because they were still eating when we were leaving uh, as i am walking up to the, to get jonah's jacket and my own jacket i was going to say to her because she had lovely earrings and i was going to say to her like oh your earrings are so lovely but before I had the time to say that, she said to me, she was like, oh my gosh, I've been looking at the two of you the whole night and you look so in love and I would love to create a relationship like that. It's like on my vision board, like hashtag uh, dream couple or couple go, go, goals or whatever. I, I'm like, thank you. Um, <laughs> that's very nice to hear. And I, oh yeah, it was actually on our fifth. It wasn't on my birthday. It was actually on our fifth uh, anniversary. Anyway, we take our jackets and then we start to walk out. And then I said to Jonas, I was like, well, can you wait here? I was like, I this is an opportunity. Like, this is the thing. Always see the opportunity without thinking about it. This is the thing before fear kicks in. Pr trust me, I do also get fear. If I start to think about something, then I will also have massive fear kick in. So without thinking about it, I'm like, Jonas can't wait here. And I turn back to her and I go to her. And I was like, Are you serious? Were you serious? Because I didn't want to scream it out in the restaurant. I was like, Were you serious about like really meeting a guy that you would have like really nice connection with? And she was like, Yeah, I'm very, very serious. Why? I'm like, I work as a hypnotherapist, and this is one of my specialties that I help people connect with their soulmate partners. It's is this something that you would be open to? She was like, Yes. I was like, fantastic are you on facebook you can connect with me on facebook and then i'm bringing up my phone and i'm like where what's your name on facebook? remember how i always make sure i ask them first like you can add me but then i bring up my phone and i ask them for their information i connected with her super 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 nice person and she was like this was so meant to be and we had such a moment then when we get home that same night, I, I make her video and I'm saying like, super nice to meet you. Um, like, I would love to hear your story. What's your story? Have you been dating a lot? Like, what's going on? Uh, and then uh, she replied to me. She was like, I will answer you tomorrow. I'm just having a night with my mom to tonight. She was like, I will answer you tomorrow. She actually never got back to me after that. But I see that because I have, I made sure to also add her on Instagram and both Instagram and Facebook. So I know that like every time I see a post of her, she's a super nice person. Like I always make sure to make myself seen in her feed. So I always uh, like her stuff or write something in her comments and stuff like that. So I stay on the top of her mind. You see, I'm warming her up. This is the part where I said, follow up with people. I'm following up with her. Uh, yet I have not followed up as in writing her personal message, but I have followed up like making sure that I'm warming her up all the time. I don't know if she will become a client in the future. Maybe she will, maybe she won't. Doesn't matter. It's the whole thing. Like when we do this with enough people, you will bring in clients. Do you see the power? Does this sound scary to you? Yes or no? I think for most people, this sounds terrifying, but this is the thing. If we want to build our businesses, if we want to be entrepreneurs, if we want to um, really super scary, thank you. I know when I started to do this, I was so afraid. And this was actually thanks to what I said before, the network marketing business. I was like, okay, I'm going to go out and I'm going to prospect five people. And as I'm not going home until I prospect five people, and this was actually for all you guys who know Stockholm, it's it's in Vellingby. Uh, so I was there in Vellingby Center, and I was like, I need to prospect five people. And then I can text uh, my ex-husband, who was then my husband, and I was going to text him. So that was kind of my reward to tell him, like, oh, I went out and I prospect five people. So I was like, where shall I find them? So I went into shops, uh, and I, I walked up to people. Not, not customers, but I walked up to the people who worked there. And I talked so fast because I was so nervous. I talked so fast that one of the ladies that I spoke with, she was like, I couldn't really hear you. Can you stop? 
and I was wet in my hands. I was sweating so much, completely nervous. Uh, but I did it. I, I, I took numbers. I connected with five people on, on Facebook and I could text my, my ex-husband. And I was like, I did it. I talked to five people, to five strangers. And now I have five new people to show the network marketing business to. This is the thing. Uh, say, uh, so Evelina, when you say same, same, is it same as in scary? Or do you feel that you can go out and do this? Or what, what is same, same? Yes, I understand. Uh, Sophia, okay, one year ago, it would have been, been super, super scary. Now, less scary. Amazing. Because this is something that we can practice. Uh, I, remember, I don't know how this is going to translate to, to Swedish or to English, so, sorry. But I remember, like, when I was in network marketing business, and I, I it's like a momentum thing like when you get into the momentum when you do one scary thing and then you do the next then it becomes less scary right we've all been there something we did and then it became less scary less scary less scary so i was in that momentum and then i see a guy on one of the most luxurious streets on uh, in stockholm so he's standing there probably waiting for a taxi or something and i just woke up to him and i didn't think and i'm like it looks like i said i have to say it in, in swedish and i will have to translate it i was like this is what the was scaffed kind of meaning like it looks like your head is <laughs> on the top of you i don't know like how you would it basically means like it looks like you're a smart person how could it could anybody translate into english basically it means like you're a smart person but nobody really says that and i have no idea where i got that comment from but he was like well thank you why or what do you want and I'm like, well, I have this awesome business. I wonder if you would be interested in it. He was like, no, thank you. I'm not interested. And I'm like, okay. And then I walked away feeling a bit of shame. Super rejected. He really, really, really rejected me. He was nice, but it was super much of a rejection. I didn't feel so good afterwards. But I have laughed so hard at that sentence that I gave to that guy. Like, it looks like you have the head on your shoulders, basically. Um, it was hilarious, absolutely hilarious. So these are just like random stories, but this is how I built my network marketing business back then, but now also this business. But the interesting thing is when I got into the whole more of the fertility being super, super specific of what I did, then I became a bit scared and I didn't really tell people what I did anymore. Uh, because I had so many blockages myself that I was really, really afraid of showing up. I was okay with showing up on camera, but I didn't talk to people in real life about what I did. Because I was afraid that they were going to ask me about my own story. Like, are you a mom? Like I already told you, that I was so afraid that people were going to see me like a fraud. And I didn't realize that, well, actually my my story like i'm choosing to not be a mom right now because i'm i want to have my ideal mommy life before i become a mom and then my kids can come in to have a great upbringing and i see that there are two parts of women some women like 50 percent, almost like 50 percent, they get pregnant very easily we do a few sessions and then they get pregnant they don't have so high of a standard uh like it's not like bad but they just don't have that much of a high standard but like most of you who are here you most of you have done more than a few sessions and you know like hey I, I really want to create super much freedom in my life before my kids arrive and that's the whole reason why they're not getting pregnant so anyway I had this blockage and didn't talk to people like I didn't I didn't prospect people randomly out on the street and um I didn't feel like even though people actually twice came up to me and asked me about my fertility business and I was like well you can you can text me you can send me a message on Facebook no confidence and the interesting thing is this morning my colleague and I we, we are always doing sessions for each other because the power of really letting go and more and more fears it is absolutely incredible so we did a session this morning and for me this was actually connected to a past life can't doesn't really matter but it was connected to a past life apparently it didn't matter <laughs> it was connected to a past life super 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 painful past life where i created so much trauma 
which had been blocking me from living my ideal life in this lifetime. It had been blocking me from really, really, really talking and building my business and feeling super confident in building my business. We released that. We healed it throughout the session. Then I came to the gym. Um, like I made you a voice message from the gym. Like I normally. There was this guy like he works in the reception as you enter the the gym and he's kind of the boss there or whatever we we always shit chat like blah 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 nothing like really nothing else but like oh it's nice weather or oh great workout you know very 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 like shallow stuff today he is telling me like oh i got super super stressed out because it was this little kid who was in the gym and he was like throwing stuff around and I'm like well I work with fertility I I help women who are trying to conceive they can't conceive for some reason I help them get pregnant and I help future moms to heal themselves so that their children can get healed parents and this is how I believe that we change the world and he was like that's awesome I'm like I know (laughs) and then I went on and I started to do my workout and I'm like did this just happen did I just tell this guy that I work with fertility, that I help women get pregnant who can't get pregnant, and that I'm healing the world by doing what I do. Like, yeah, I did. So, I took my power back. Because I healed that old past life, the trauma stuff that I had until today, apparently, it just became super, super natural. I didn't know when I was going to the gym that I was going to prospect anybody or talk to anybody about my fertility business. It came naturally. This is the thing, when we have healed, when we have released fears, fear of resistance, fear of rejection, when we have healed that, we can go out and it can be just the most natural, amazing thing to just talk to people and connect with people. And it's so much fun. And the interesting thing is that last night, somebody found me on Instagram and she texted me. She was like, Linda, I just found your page and this makes so much sense to me what you do. And I would love to have more information. Can you please send it to me? And I'm like, sure. And then I go into my booking system because I have a whole booking system. Like if you want to load stuff like that as well, we can go into that. But I think that may be a little bit like too much. Well, uh, and then I go into my booking system. And then I see that somebody like a few days ago had booked herself in for a call like tomorrow. And she just found my stuff on YouTube. And I'm like, this is really, really incredible. Like, the, I see this happen all the time, actually. When we release, like, fear and stuff, people are showing up. People are showing up from everywhere. Who is still with me? Like, I feel like I'm talking a lot. Does this make sense? Who is still here? Are we still interested to, to know more? I would say the number one reason why most are in building their businesses is because they don't talk to people. They don't prospect people. Okay, wonderful. Tax of the So interesting. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. Your appreciation keeps me going. <laughs> I know that Marie had some questions and I'm going to read them so that you all can just hear the questions. Mm. Amazing. Okay, so we had, uh, I don't know, yes. Okay, so from Marie was like, how do you start? Like when you don't have your own business yet, how do you start? Uh, If you have an idea, how do you find customers? That I already told you, you go out and you prospect people wherever you are, in the cab, in the gym, in Facebook groups, face-to-face, online, wherever. Did you see that? It was just like falling down some stuff from, the heavens that was really cool 
Did you see that? Pretty amazing. Okay. Uh, uh, when do you start charging for your service? How do I like pay taxes on what I've earned? Where do I market my service? Uh, what is the best way to get a um, income? Should I have a website? If I want to do a course, where can I get help to start? Okay, these are amazing. And I would say like there is one video that is very soon being launched. So uh, Johanna, I'm not sure what it was. Maybe it was a feather or it was some kind of just like fluff. I'm not sure. Uh, but it was beautiful. Like it's snowing from the inside. Um, Johanna will be editing a video. So Johanna, hey, hey, hey. She is the one editing my YouTube videos nowadays. So she will be editing a video. It's called... Where, where is what it's called okay yeah uh, so the video is called how to uh, i'm not sure if i'm going to call it create or start but how to start an online business and make money online before you become a mom nine important steps yeah yeah so you do see a lot of light phenomenon amazing wonderful <laughs> yeah it's because like we are really teaching like high level stuff and when you realize all of this stuff and you implement it in your own life your life will change that's almost a promise almost a promise. uh okay so there will be a video coming out very very soon that i will highly encourage you to to watch as soon as it becomes available on my youtube that will answer the question if you have an idea no how do you start to find customers i already told you that but uh, how do you start? So that video already explains that. So I'm not going to go into that. When do I start charge for my service? That video explains exactly that. Uh, where do I market my service? I already told you that. Like I would, like a strategy that I would use and that I have used and that I still use is that, for example, YouTube, amazing for long term like youtube takes quite a while to build up it, it takes quite a while for for most people uh it takes quite a while to to build your youtube but it's a super good like long-term investment so youtube is an investment in your business and the people who are coming into your youtube and again watching your videos they will be raving fans. If they resonate with your message, they will be like raving fans. They will love. They they most people who watch your videos, like they will binge watch your videos, they are going to be ready to buy from you. Uh, most people are not going to buy from you if I did not pee myself. I just wanted to grab that one. Okay. Uh, <laughs> most people will not buy from you if they have only like for example seen a photo of you and and read a text but if you can show up on camera and this is why it's so 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 important that you learn how to show up on camera and this is why i highly recommend that you go in the description box below you have a link to the the training how to get comfortable in front of the camera you have a hypnotic audio in that that will program your subconscious mind to show up on camera to be that you will feel super super safe in sharing your whole message it is incredible and you have 50 percent off when you use the code that i shared here in the comments so that's the thing youtube is the long-term strategy then you can go like in terms of the marketing then you can talk to people and physical like real life and then you talk to people in facebook groups or you can find people through different hashtags um on for example instagram so choose one platform and and learn that platform like for example building youtube it's it's quite a lot of stuff that you have to learn for me i am committed i'm going to grow my youtube so i'm i'm, I'm um, investigating uh time to really really learn that um regarding facebook for example i find it super super easy like it's just to go like doing a live stream or whatever to share your message and then you connect with the people who are there watching it so there are different ways that you can do like your marketing but those are the ways like really showing up on camera 
really showing up on camera and do not be spammy. Like that's a super, super important thing. I see a lot of people are being quite spammy because you just keep sharing, 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 like um, promoting, promoting, promoting. And we don't want to be spammy. So it's super, super important to give people value and then offer something. Um, like I do here, I give you a lot of value. And at the same time, I offer you that you do can buy the course if you have, like if you want to, and if you want to have 50% off. I'm not sure for how long, maybe I will take that discount code off like in a week from now, or really sure. So if you want to make sure, that you, if you want it to the discounted price, make sure that you get it. Uh, and then you had a question, should I have a website? And I would say like, just think for yourself in this way, like for all of us, if you want to buy something from somebody, would you say that, it gives you a bit of trust in their service if they have a website. I want to know from, from you guys who are here. If you're going to buy something from somebody, would you feel more confident in buying their service if they had a website? Would that give you some sort of trust? I would love to hear your answers. Yes. Yes. Okay. Fantastic. Yeah. That's, that's my answer as well. That's how I feel as well. So definitely. And um, when it comes to a website, it does not have to be uh, overwhelming. I do have another course. It's called how to create your website without stress or without overwhelm. So there are easy steps to help you to program your subconscious mind to build your first ever website. You don't need to know anything before, but you can build it in one of the easy uh website builders they're also cheap to uh, very very they cost very little to use them so i'm sharing in there uh what website builder tools that i recommend and how to do it and i would just recommend to have like an introduction video and a, a button where they can book a call and then you can have it set with a calendar for example calendly uh which is like an online uh, tool so that people can get to your schedule like all of you who have booked a call with me before you know that you can come to my calendar and then you can book a call um, I use something else called go high level but that's much more advanced like I would definitely not recommend that in the beginning um, so in this course um, create your website without overwhelm I do teach your subconscious mind I program your subconscious mind to feel super super calm uh, while you are putting together your ever first website without stress, without overwhelm, because yes, it makes a difference when you can send somebody to your website. It's it's very, very professional and it doesn't have to include a lot of stuff. And this is the thing also on your website, on this site or sales page, whatever you want to call it, um, you can also put uh, the testimonials there because in this other video that will come out very soon that Johanna is going to be editing I share like how do you actually bring in testimonials from people and so make sure that you watch this video make sure that you, if you're not subscribed to this YouTube channel make sure that you are subscribed and that you like there is a little bell symbol I think can, can you see the little bell symbol so make sure that you click the little bell symbol because that shows YouTube that you want to be notified when Fertility Alignment, which is my YouTube channel, sends out videos so, do, so that you don't miss the videos. Because that video will explain to you how you bring in testimonials and when you start to charge for your service so that you can become free. Uh, and like now I only speak for Sweden, so Sweden, Sweden, and the Swedish people regarding like, um, when should you like on paper start your business in sweden we have a certain amount of money that you can make before you have to like legally pay taxes and stuff for that so it's called a hobby income uh, and i would definitely not bother with starting like a legal business until i was sure that this is like something that i actually enjoy so i would just like just start just start like follow the steps that I teach you in that other uh, video called how to start your online business before you become a mom so that you have freedom. Uh, follow the steps that I teach in there and uh, 
then you can like when you start to bring in money then you can figure out the, the tax stuff and there are super super easy like there are websites and stuff skatterikit where you can figure that out but don't like don't let that stop you from starting your business just start your business Sofia, for you, for you, for example, you have started your business now. Uh, have you already like started your uh, business, uh, like legally, or do you still do it as a hobby, like paper-wise, a hobby? Uh, yeah, you know, this is a super cool, good question. Let's say I want to be an influencer, talk about gardening, for example, but the fear of mean people hold me back. How can I think there? It's, it's going to be super, super important to release the fear of mean people. And it's, I cannot like tell you from, from mind to mind perspective because this healing needs to take place. So you could, you could book a session with me. We could do releasing of that fear in a session i will also include in this training like hey guys you're getting so much from this training so i will do a separate uh call for this training where we will be working on uh, releasing fear of mean people fear of rejection who would like that who would like to have help to release fear of rejection who think and feel that that would help your business let me know. Uh, and meanwhile, you are answering that. I want to answer Marie's last question, which was, uh, if I'm going to do a web web course, where should I start? Okay, fantastic. Yeah, so you feel that you would get help from that. So we will definitely do that. I will let you know when that will be. And then you can also watch the replay of that several times and just keep like shedding layers uh, because as I said many many times the, the layers are very very deep on the fear of rejection because it's like a human thing we are programmed to not want to be rejected because like let's just go back when we were living in tribes we needed our tribe to survive and if we were rejected or pushed out from the tribe it was actually threatening our existence it was dangerous we could not survive without our tribe and this is why it's like a human core instinct that we need to be connected with our tribe so marie said if i want to do a web course where do i start so i would rec like my recommendation on this is to before you do a web course start helping people start helping people start to understand like start to improve your skill in helping people first and then you will know what kind of questions people are asking you on a regular basis because the thing is like if we don't have an audience to sell our um i mean you could do a web course now but if you don't have an audience to sell your web course to it's going to be waste so you truly want like now i have built several courses but i know that that's a long-term thing that's a really long, long term thing. So it's nothing that brings me millions of millions, if I put it that way. Uh, I, I, I sell like one here, one there. It's, it's like a slow process. That's not where, like, that's a longer process. When, whenever we want to build like a passive sort of income, which is not really passive either, because we have to talk about it, we have to promote it, and then it's not really passive. But in terms of not having to do sessions, yes, it is passive that way, I would guess. But uh, that, like, you have to have people to promote it too. Otherwise, nobody's going to know that it actually exists. So I would rather start working with people one on one, and then you can maybe start working with people like a group, like I do here. I work with a group of people right now. Um, I do it for free <laughs> right now. Uh, but hopefully some of you will see the value and you will you will understand that, hey, I really want more of this and I can really get a big, massive benefit in really spreading my own message. That's that's really my intention. I really, really hope that you will that you will get that. Okay. Uh, and then it was another question from another amazing lady who said that her intention for this training was that. Uh, she wanted to feel safe in uh, 
may, being uh, advertising herself and her company and being safe in showing herself on social media and being safe in her message and remove fear. So that's amazing. That's what we will be doing and when we do that session. And then after last times or last week's um, training, I received a message on social media and this amazing woman, she told me that um, she has a lot of like activity going around and she said it's not like nice activity. So basically she feels that she's kind of haunted by ghosts and stuff. And I said that this is actually something that we can bring up also in this training because it's it's all related. And I think that this is also related to, to the witch wound and that because there was, we are healers, all of us and this woman as well, when we are healers and when we have lived so many lives and we have so much light around us, many things tend to want to come into our space. Who has experienced that? So we, we need to set our boundaries. We need to really step into our true power. Um, and I know that this specific woman that you are saving up now so that you can work together with me. And we, when we work together with you, like on a private basis, basis we will do amazing things we will really like help your your shield to to get bigger and bigger and really set your boundaries that would be absolutely amazing uh, and meanwhile what you can all do is that you can uh attend the, the next training that we have when we are really stepping into our power more and more and more so i think because I start to get really, really hungry. We have gone on now for two and a half hour. And I'm so grateful for all of you that are here, that have been here, that are watching the replay. And when you are watching the replay, I would love to know, like, who are you? <laughs> What's your name? Where are you from? Do you have a business? Do you wish to start a business? Like, where are you at? And I would also love to know from all of you who are here and who will be watching later, like, where do you feel most stuck? Like, we have talked a lot today, uh, but where do you feel most stuck? So you have, if, if I have already answered it, you don't have to say the same thing again, obviously, because I've already talked about that. But where do you feel like mentally, emotionally the most stuck? Is it the fear of even starting your business? Is it that you don't know what your business will be about? Uh, you're very well confident. Uh, or is it something else that you don't know, like you're afraid of? Because nobody can tell me after this that you don't know how to get clients. I already told you to see. Do you all know that are here? Like logically, how do you get clients? Do you know how to get clients now? Kids, kids, kids. <laughs> Yes. Okay. Fantastic. Thank you. So nobody can tell me after this that you don't know logically how to get clients. Now it's just a question of, okay, how do I release the fear? So I would love to know in the comments, where do you feel that your biggest fears, fears are? And what would you say or think or feel would make the biggest impact in your life, your business right now as we are moving forward? Because I'm looking forward to the day where I can share you all on, where I can be your biggest share leader, really, like, really sharing with you when you are sharing your message on social media. I want to be there. I want to say, hey, I'm so proud of you because I am. I'm so, so, so proud of you. And the only thing it takes is to release, release, release the old release the witch wounds, heal the witch wounds, heal the feeling that you are safe to actually show up in this world. Because as you are showing up in this world and as you are starting to prospect people, as you talk about your service, as you talk about the people's lives, like, oh my goodness, like, for example, the book, the book is not even finished, but I've told, told so many women, so many women who are like, they they said before like oh I don't I don't want any help I'm like hey I'm just finishing a book and this book is filled with testimonials of women that overcame unexplained fertility thanks to our amazing work together and they're like oh wow really and now they are starting to become interested I've warmed them up and now I'm promoting my book this is the thing we need to be brave we need to show up 
nobody is going to do this for us. So that's actually something else that I wanted to say. Maybe you realize after this training that, yes, mean comments or rejection or ignored. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing this. And you may realize after you hear this training or any of my other videos that actually building a business is not for you. You may realize that, hey, I, I really want to live my life's purpose, but I don't want to have like the whole responsibility of having a business. Okay, so it's so the same. Thank you. And nothing wrong with that. Nothing bad with that. It's just different. Like I realize now, like not everybody is cut out or want to have to go through all of this. Not everybody want to go through all of this because there are a lot of things that we go through as entrepreneurs. So there are options. You could be a freelancer. You could be a freelancer yoga teacher. You could be a freelancer uh, cat communicator. Or you could be a freelancer uh, like food, whatever, healthy eating stuff. You could be a freelancer and work for somebody else for their online company. So there are so many ways. So don't let, like, if you feel fear after this, which I hope that you don't, but if you do, and maybe you're realizing more and more like, oh, this is not for me because you are going to wear a lot of hats. And you realize, like, it's not for me. That's fully okay. You can still create your freedom when you work as a, a um, freelancer. You can still have, like, freedom in terms of, you can work wherever you want, wherever you want to. And you can, I don't know, like how much time freedom you have in telling the people like, I want to work only these hours, but that's going to be up to the company that you work for, I guess. Uh, but there is really, really cool. Like when you are having your full own like healing business or coaching business, whatever, it's, it's incredible. Like, but it's going to take a while. It's going to take some be overcoming fear like overcoming fear is the big thing um so i truly hope because evelina you also said in the beginning like when we spoke before you said like oh shit how do i bring in clients so i've really taught today like what is the concept of bringing in clients and i know for all of you who already have a skill you already have a healing modality if you would switch out your sharing, like, hey, I do um, this form of healing modality to, hey, I can help you solve this problem. And then you go out and you talk to people, and you talk to 10 people. I think that at least one person of that will become a client. So if you want to talk to, if you want 10 clients, talk to 100 people. And if you're really excited and passionate about what you do, when you talk to 100 people, more than 10 people will become clients. This is why it's so important that you're passionate about what you do. It all comes together. So if you jumped in towards the end of this training, make sure that you go back and watch it all over again so that you get the whole concept. With that said, I'm going to have dinner now. And I wish you all a super, super, super beautiful evening. And I'm truly, truly, truly grateful that you're all here. You're all committed to really making a difference in the world and making a difference for yourself, making your own money and making freaking much money because you are worthy of making money. I'm really, really, really excited to see <laughs> to see you all the next time where we will be working on releasing Ferris. That's what we will be doing. Sending you so much love. Bye. Bye, bye, bye. Well, we'll see if I can end this. Yes. Uh, your stream will stop immediately. Bye.